our world is experiencing an extraordinary rate of change in a disruptive and unstoppable manner. Even before the pandemic, this change has already begun. The pandemic just sped things up. The key players, innovation, digitalization, and technological progress. These three are fundamentally transforming the whole industry, reshaping consumers' demands and challenging traditional business logic. We are already witnessing the greatest economic transfer and societal and cultural shift in history. So in today's video, we're going to look deeper into the 15 changes in today's world. Stick with us as we equip you with the knowledge to traverse the world that awaits you. Welcome to Thrive Test. If you're new here, why not hit that subscribe button and join our community. And as always guys, give this video a thumbs up for that YouTube algorithm. Number 1. Degrees are becoming pointless. Schools as we know them are no longer needed. The university experience has come to an end. Today's children learn from home via Zoom. Even a decade ago, local teachers were ill-equipped to prepare children for the world in which they will be immersed in. The pandemic was the final nail in the coffin of a vastly antiquated educational system. Why have an uninspired, underpaid, and underqualified teacher explain things to your children when they can learn it in the same way from the absolute best in their field? Consider the following scenario. The best math professor in the world teaching math to everyone through different platforms such as Zoom and Google Meet. It's no longer a matter of scale. Teachers still serve as a follow-up to the lesson and provide support throughout the child's educational path. But they are no longer the primary source of education. Teachers should be compensated similarly to athletes, with the absolute best of the best earning exorbitant sums of money because they provide the most value to the consumer. Education is undergoing a significant transformation. You're asking them to concentrate for four to five hours on a Zoom call when you know you couldn't. Within the next three years, education will be gamified. You should be able to collaborate and enjoy the puzzle of learning. Companies like Fortnite, Roblox, and Minecraft could easily serve as portals to a properly developed educational metaphors. We see no reason why quality education focused on teaching you how to solve problems and make decisions couldn't be gamified as opposed to the traditional approach centered on memorization and regurgitation of meaningless knowledge. Number 2. Office hours are insignificant. No one should care how long it takes you to complete the task. Service payments will eventually be charged differently. Pay by service rather than by the hour. Payment by the hour encourages service providers to take longer to complete tasks, whereas it should be the other way around. Why do exceptionally skilled individuals need to suffer? when they could complete the same task in a fraction of time. The previous system is flawed. Work based on results is a superior type of remuneration, with the rise of the smart contracts and oracles that can read real-life data and safely communicate proof to the contract. Live streaming payments are already being explored for those few services where delivery is based on time quantity, such as entertainment or one-on-one -on -one consultation. Instead of paying the whole amount for an online self-development conference, you could stream simply the speaker of your choice and pay by the second, not the minute. The total cost will be significantly lower than the total ticket price. Premium content consumption will be recognized as a utility in the near future. Electricity is charged based on how much you consume. Number 3. Your office or business is your laptop. Cities have been taken over by office towers crushing the soul of the community in the process. We've been cursed with glass skyscrapers and neon lighting instead of magnificent cities. What a dreadful way to live. Nobody wants to come to work anymore. Why waste hours of your day in traffic when you can perform the same work from your laptop and utilize the rest of your time to spend time with your kids or on your hobbies? The trade is self-evident. The whole commercial real estate sector is in distress, with a particular emphasis on office buildings. For the first time since the Industrial Revolution, the workplace is on the verge of collapse. In a last-ditch effort to maximize value, building owners are transforming their office buildings into apartments. When compared to 2020, the number of office buildings converted to apartments nearly doubled in 2021. Corporate to residential conversions accounted for 41% of all conversions. Your home has never been more important, which is why prices are skyrocketing. Real estate is outperforming Bitcoin as the second best store of value this decade. 
With software consuming the globe, there isn't much for it to consume. We're on the verge of complete softwareization of the marketplace, and your entire business will be run from a single laptop that you can take with you everywhere you go. Number four, patriotism is replaced by chosen communities. There is a steady erosion of confidence between the general populace and the governments. People are losing faith in their elected authorities to make the greatest decisions for the majority. We know they're corrupt. We know that they bend to huge businesses. And we know they couldn't care less about what we need or want. But they'd sacrifice you in a blink of an eye for their benefit. This is why people no longer feel any attachment to their hometown. There is no longer a sense of belonging. Nobody is now representing you. As a result, we form our communities. We gravitate to communities that share our values, interests, and goals. This has also been apparent in our behavior on social media platforms. The adoption of community-driven apps and features has soared. Communities are at the center of the new world. Because you can live anywhere, work from anywhere, and spend the majority of your active time online, digital communities are becoming the mainstream. People will work for money, but they will die for honor and to defend what they believe in. Patriotism is faltering in the second half, and we are witnessing large migrations around the world as individuals seek better rewards for their contributions. The healthcare system in the United States is a farce and California's tax tiers have turned Los Angeles into a scarcely habitable metropolis. This is why Americans are flocking to Puerto Rico, and Europeans are purchasing second houses in Emirates such as Dubai. Number 5. Platforms are stronger than governments. We saw this firsthand when Facebook played a decisive role in the United States elections, and the Brexit referendum in the United Kingdom. Nothing has been more devastating to a nation state than Twitter's decision to turn off the microphone of then US President Donald Trump. It doesn't matter who is holding the mic, but consider the thought that a technology platform has the potential to silence the commander of the world's most powerful military and one of its most powerful economies. You are the king if you can silence a king. This is instilling a dislike for private enterprise, which is interfering with fundamental human rights. Humanity does not want Zuckerberg to monitor their digital presence, or for free speech to be outlawed and deplatformed if they disagree with the cancel culture mob. This is why Facebook's user base is declining. This is why Mark Zuckerberg's metaverse will never become a reality. And by metaverse, we mean the new version of the internet that is now in development. Platforms like Facebook, Twitter, TikTok and Instagram can have their own space in the metaverse, but we don't think it's a good idea for them to dominate the doors and hallways. If platforms are now more powerful than governments, then communities can make or break platforms. It's past due for a platform change as well. Before we go on with our list, I'd like to ask you guys if you agree that the degree is becoming pointless in today's world. How about basing the remuneration on the service output instead of work hours? What are your thoughts about vanishing patriotism and work from home setup? Please share your insights with us since your opinion matters most. Number six, the internet is the world's largest marketplace. Every year, the UN publishes a lengthy report on trade and development. The conclusions are self-evident. It is predicted that global internet traffic in 2022 will surpass all internet traffic in 2016. Global markets are speeding their internet adoption and gaining access to online commerce and content consumption. Digital goods are also on the surge, with many experts predicting that the digital goods sector will match that of physical commodities in the next decades. Media is now a fully digital economy. And as digital scarcity rises via NFTs, most physical items will be tracked and held by digital correspondents. When you buy a house, you receive your ownership papers. You keep one copy, the notary keeps another, and the local government keeps a third. What if they all perish? You lose your proof of title. Just what ISIS did when they infiltrated Mosul. They burned land documents to create full chaos. Property may be traded from anywhere in the globe thanks to proof of ownership in digital ledgers. 
We are investors in a blockchain-based company that tokenizes real estate assets, which means you may legally own a part of a building on the other side of the globe. The rent is dispersed among token holders. Tokenized ownership and fractional investments are two of our generation's most significant financial advances. If in the past only the wealthy could use financial instruments to develop wealth, the internet and more specifically the new internet will allow everyone from anywhere in the globe to employ far more powerful tools than were before available. Number 7. Find your sense of purpose or feel lost. Society is rapidly changing. The church and religion have both declined. As a result, society has become more materialistic and pragmatic in its activities. This enabled our culture to become increasingly materially wealthy. There are some experiments conducted, and the results demonstrate that religion causes poverty. Religion has less of an impact on a country's people as it becomes wealthier. However, in the process of purging ourselves of religion, we may suffer some collateral damage. It has something to do with the concept of belonging to a physical community with a spiritual conscience. This new generation feels lost and alone. Any 20 or 30 year old will tell you that they feel lonely outside of their immediate family. This newer generation is searching for a purpose. Their whole world is in disarray and the rules of life are changing right in front of their eyes. They grew up in a world that no longer exists as they get older. Value systems are also transforming. This is the primary factor for the increasing in societal issues. People just want to fit in, so they join groups that accept them. Number 8. Your online reputation serves as your resume. Even though degrees are no longer required, we nevertheless want proof of skill to engage in commercial exchange. This is where your online activity comes in. Twitter serves as your resume. Your YouTube channel serves as your interview or portfolio. Showcase your work and people looking to buy or hire you will find it if you're talented enough. Here's a tip from an expert. If you want to work for any company in the world, start working as if you're already working there. We guarantee that if what you put out is worthwhile and contributes to the company's success, they will find you. If you build it, they will come, was a popular saying back in the day. It used to apply to customers. Now it applies to quality workers who do the building and companies that come to them. Number 9. War is considered archaic and out of date. Take a look at what's going on in Ukraine right now. Tanks, military guys shooting metal slabs, and nukes threatening a total societal collapse. To this generation, the thought of going to war seems so old-fashioned. Because your patriotism has vanished, what would it take for the government to persuade you to go to war and kill people you don't know? Those are bygone power struggles. We now have that technology. Drones, unmanned aircraft, economic trade, and innovation wars. Starting a battle seems entirely out of character, when the purpose is to preserve the freaking planet and establish a backup society on Mars. It has a Neanderthal type of appearance. If countries wish to compete, they should do so through technological advancement. The country that creates the most value for humanity will be at the top of the leaderboard, and we will all applaud. Unfortunately, this is not the case. Humans are greedy beings who seek power and are terrified of scorn or loss of status. It generally takes a century for the power of authority to shift, and we are witnessing the breakdown of the US economy and the rise of China firsthand. The issue is that while China is winning the economic war, their ideals in terms of human rights, privacy, and liberties are not matched with those of the countries that are smashing it in that department. See European countries. Japan, and even the United States. Well, time can only tell. Number 10. The new rich have distinctive values. Do you know how old money desired the grandest mansion possible? Those properties are now on the market, and no one wants them. And it's not because people can't afford them. Every 17 hours, the world introduces a new billionaire. This is where your reality may deviate. Every six seconds, someone new becomes a millionaire. These are self-made individuals who do not necessarily view money and riches the same way those past generations did. 
the new rich desire to be happy and fulfilled, while Jeff Bezos is tearing down bridges to allow his mega yacht to exit to win the measuring contest, the new genuine rich are less concerned with conspicuous displays of wealth or huge resource consumption. Sure, you want to live comfortably, but the new richest homes are smart and efficient homes. They reduce their carbon footprint and invest their fortune in game-changing technology. The who's got the bigger home story belongs to a previous generation. The new affluent just wants enough money to live a comfortable life without worrying about money issues. And to utilize the extra to build cool shit. Just look at Sam Bagman Fry, the world's youngest self-made billionaire. He doesn't care about tangible money and is donating his fortune at a rapid rate than any other billionaire before him. We're in the midst of a cultural transition and it's time for our generation to stand firm and decide what we're going to do with the wealth we create. Number 11. Old people can no longer offer advice. We have finally reached a point of no return. Consider this. The boomer generation has 60 years of constant change ahead of them. They were raised in the aftermath of a successful war when wealth was plentiful and costs were low. With a regular job, you could purchase a house. Today, to see the light at the end of the rainbow in your lifetime, you now need a degree and a working spouse. Their brains developed in an offline world and are unable to fathom the complicated ramifications of a crumbling economic system. A societal revolt where your privilege has not been passed down through generations. And the rules of the game have not changed. This is an entirely new game. Working hard no longer produces wealth because the currency depreciates quicker than you can produce it. You must have both a builder and a sales mindset. You can't spend 10 years getting extremely good at one thing because the market will shift four or five times in that time. We are living in a non-linear era. Instead of walking in a straight line to your goal, you must leap from one moving tile to another, hoping that jump after jump would ultimately bring you closer. This generation is left to fend for itself, and it's still figuring out where it's headed. Number 12. Privacy is more important than security. One thing has become evident in recent years. We are extremely concerned about our privacy. The state will always frighten individuals into giving up their privacy in exchange for a false sense of security. Do you know where you're safest? In solitary confinement? In other words, a cage? Nothing can enter the cage while you're inside. You're no longer free, but you're safe. The question is if you're willing to live your life in a cage for the sake of illusory security. What exactly is there to be terrified of? This new world wants to be alone. It wants to be free and feel alive. This is a significant distinction between this world and the previous one. We'd rather be less safe but free than safe but constrained. Consider the people of North Korea, China, or the United States. Individual rights are violated when they watch where you are, what you like, who you're with, what you talk about, and what you don't like. One of the reasons we are moving away from a cash-based society, they want to be able to track where your money is going. This is why they won't let you buy anything worth more than $10,000 in cash. It's about continual monitoring and control, disguised as protection from unlawful activities. But in reality, we've seen them give the go-ahead for illicit conduct. People do not want to be tied to a standard that others can disregard. This is why there has been an increase in the privacy narrative. After Apple restricted Facebook's capacity to mine data last year, the company lost more than $200 billion. People want to secure what they own. Thus, apps like Signal and Telegram have exploded in popularity. The need of protecting your online activities has grown. You may get control over your online activity by using simple solutions such as a VPN. Privacy is a critical narrative moving ahead, and this new generation is eager to pay to reclaim what is rightfully theirs. Number 13. Power needs to be decentralized. The system is fundamentally flawed. We need a better system. Although centralization has its advantages, and it was critical in the development of the old world to get us to where we are today, it is no longer required across the board. 
the entire financial world is on the verge of disruption due to decentralization. Banks are among the wealthiest organizations in the world, and it turns out that everything they do can be automated, safely recorded in code, and processed at a fraction of the cost. The concept of electing politicians to vote on your behalf on subjects that are important to you is flawed. We've got facial recognition, blockchains, and digital passports. Now it's time for us to vote on the issues that matter to us using an app on our phones. Direct democracies are likely to be one of the first options to be implemented, especially if they show effectiveness at the local level. Every year, you pay taxes. Do you know where that money goes? Most likely not. What if you could direct where a percentage of that money is directed? If your street has potholes, you might prioritize them or work on improving your neighborhood school or park. We have already entrusted authority to others who have mishandled it. In this new world, power is returning to the citizens. Number 14. Developed societies are borderless. We stated at the start of this video that your entire business or office can now fit in a laptop. We also talked about the rapid expansion of internet infrastructure and our skepticism of local governments. People are migrating around the world like never before. Why should I stay? Give me a reason to live here, contribute here, pay taxes here, and use my skills and abilities locally. Where you live is most likely the most crucial decision you'll ever make. Geography shapes culture. It influences who you hang out with, who you may marry, what business prospects you pursue, the food you consume, and the air you breathe. If this is the new world, you can bet that people are trying to get the best return on their time. Number 15. Wealth is abundant and available to everyone. There are no barriers in this new world. You are no longer chosen by a higher power to get what you seek. You build it yourself in this new world, and you don't need anyone's permission to do it. When online, you have the same voice as a multi-billionaire corporation. You and they are competing for attention. You have everything you need to learn, build, and grow. If there was ever a moment when meritocracy was at its zenith, it's now. There has never been so much money and riches generated in such a short time. If you're smart and motivated, it won't take you more than five years to accumulate enough wealth to live comfortably. People are afraid of change and want to cling to remnants of the past. Those that accept the new will be the biggest beneficiaries of this transition. The list could go on, as we are sure you've seen changes in your own life. So, we'll ask you guys, how is your world changing? Share your experiences with the community since your input is extremely valuable and it would be a shame not to share it with like-minded people. As a bonus tip, the keys to prospering in the new world are education and community. We've wondered over the years what it takes to not only keep the momentum of change going, but also to capitalize on new opportunities that occur. The asymmetric potential lies in a continuous consumption pattern that keeps you tuned in, as well as the people you spend time with and the community you're a part of. The next phase is closing in from the screen of your phone into the real world. We're all going to have a blast and together we will conquer the new world. Thank you for watching this Thrive-tastic video. So if you found it valuable, consider subscribing to our channel and joining our awesome community. And if you're still hungry for more, we handpicked this awesome Thrive-tastic video for you to watch next.